clap your...
My name is Dominique Aisha Robinson. I am blessed to serve as the Dean of Chapel here at Wiley College, and I want to welcome you to our Worship at Wiley experience. Wiley College is an HBCU committed to non-traditional and traditional students during their academic pursuits in a Christian learning environment. We here at Wiley College are affiliated with the United Methodist Church. What that means is that we understand how important worship and faith are to your intellectual development. Because of that, we gather together weekly every Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. Central Time to worship together. So thank you so much for joining us for our worship experience. I pray that something that is said or done blesses you tremendously. I am excited that you are here. Tune in today and make sure you tune in next week. And by the way, if you are in the chat, engage us. Send us a message. We want to be here for you. The doors of this virtual church are always open. Come on in. Good morning, Wildcat family. I am so excited that you've tuned into our worship experience. As you know, we have been celebrating women's history all month, and our theme has been Trust Black Women. We have been blessed every single week to have an amazing woman of God share with us and women from our community leading in worship. Last week's worship service, our Women of Excellence, they showed out. So thank you so much to the committee, and a special thank you again to Reverend Pastor Jennifer Carner for sharing with us. Today, we are elated that we are concluding including this month, but we're not only concluding Women's History Month, we are also beginning our journey to the cross. It is Holy Week, one of my absolute favorite liturgical times of the year. And so will you join me, your Dean of Chapel, in our call to worship? We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us, but as he travels, he does not travel alone. Scripture says that there were women who followed behind him. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Just as many women who have celebra we've celebrated all month long, we celebrate Michelle Obama, Kamala Harris, Amanda Gorman, Stacey Abrams, Keisha Lance Bottoms, and other women who have set the standard of eating nose for breakfast every day. And together we say, yes, we honor Jesus Christ, we honor black women. We honor this Holy Week and Women's History Month. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this month. We thank you for this semester. And many of us are tuning in today, a slightly discouraged and upset and tired. And so God, we come with heavy hearts, we are praying now, God, that you be with us in this worship experience that let the word that is being preached today by Minister Ty Harris all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, encourage us and help us to run on to see what the end is going to be. We thank you, God, for every prayer that is prayed, every song that is sung. We thank you, God, for the village of women you've blessed us with who continue to push us to see that God has created us to be awesome creatures. And so, God, we pray that while we are tuned into worship, you lighten the load. You turn the situation around. You deliver, restore, and renew. We claim these things done. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And wherever you are, just because it's fun to tell you, why don't you stand for our heritage anthem?
celebrating the achievements, the accomplishments of women. Women's History Month is one that we will never forget. It has left an impact on us. We have heard amazing preaching all month long from pastors and scholars and teachers and preachers. And I am more than excited, elated to share with you a young lady who's coming from us all the way from Atlanta. Again, y'all know Atlanta is home for me. So if I can pull folk from Atlanta, I will. And so I want to share with you a mentee, a little sister, a soror who is sharing with us Minister Ty Harris. Ty Harris is a native of Jacksonville, Florida. She obtained her bachelor's of science degree in psychology at Bethune Cookman University in Daytona, Florida. She is a second year MDiv student concentrating in race and religion at Candler School of Theology in Atlanta, Georgia. She currently serves as the youth ministry coordinator at Shaw Temple Amy Zion Church in Smyrna, Georgia. Ty Rihanna is a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. My brothers and my sisters, this young preacher, this young HBCU graduate, this young seminarian is coming forth to share with us as we conclude our Women's Hursary Month of Trust Black Women. Believe me when I tell you, trust and believe that a word is about to come forth.
David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Well, good morning, Wildcats. It's a pleasure to be with you all virtually. I must say thank you to the Dean, the Reverend Dr. Dominique Aisha Robinson for such a gracious invitation. If you will, go with me to the book of Esther. Chapter 1, verses 10 through 17. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. And it says, Hey, when wine had been put in the king's high spirits, he gave an order to Medhuman, Bistha, Harbona, Bigtha, Agatha, Zethar, and Carthus, the seven eunuchs who served King Ahasuerus personally. They were to bring Queen Vashti before him wearing the royal crown. She was gorgeous, and he wanted to show off her beauty both to the general public and to his important guests. But Queen Vashti refused to come as the king had ordered through the eunuchs. The king was furious, and his anger boiled inside. Now when Anita rose, the king would often talk with certain people, very smart people, about the best way to handle it. They were people who knew both the kingdom's written laws and what judges had decided about cases in the past. Verse 14, the ones he talked with the most were Karshina, Shethar, Agnatha, Tarshish, Merez, Marcina, and Nehemiah. Sorry. There were seven very important people in Persia and Media who, as the kingdom's highest leaders, were the kings in her circle. So the king said to them, according to the law, what should I do with Queen Vashti since she didn't come when I asked? King Ahasuerus ordered her through the emails. Then Manukin spoke up in front of the king and the officials. Queen Vashti, he said, has done something wrong, not just to the king himself. She has also done wrong to all the officials and the people in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. The last verse says, this is the reason news of what the king, the queen did will reach all the women, making them look down on their husbands. They will say, King Ahasuerus ordered the servants to bring Queen Vashti before them, and she simply refused to come. For the moment I have your attention, I'd like to call your attention to the theme. Nevertheless, she refused. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and wonderful God. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears. God, before we ask you of anything, God, we simply say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to get it right just one more time. God, as I sacredly stand behind John's shoes, God, I ask that every word that leaves my mouth be for you. And all who love the Lord will say, Amen. Friends, here it is, the last Tuesday of Women's History Month. We've sang, we've danced, and we've given God thanks for the powerful women who have walked before us. Platforms like Hulu and Netflix gave us hubs that composite movies and TV shows commemorating the hurdles and mountains we've climbed. Google and Bing have changed logo images to celebrate us. Apple Music, Pandora, and Spotify have generated playlists to salute our gender. The National Women's History Alliance extended the annual theme for 2021 Two, valiant women of the vote refusing to be silenced. As I pondered the theme, I knew of many women in the biblical text and AD that fit that narrative, refusing to be silenced. It is a historical fact that black women have refused to let their voices be silent, and as a result, generations upon generations have been better because nevertheless, we refused. Women like Jarena Lee, Prathia Hall, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, Madam C.J. Walker, Claudette Colvin, Aretha Franklin, Ruby Bridges, Fannie Lou Hamer, the Reverend Dr. Katie Geneva Cannon, the Reverend Dr. Teresa Fry Brown, Maya Angelou, Coretta Scott King, Michelle Obama, Stacey Abrams, Kamala Harris, and your very own Dean, the Reverend Dr. Dominique Aisha Robinson. And that's just to name a few. Because of their refusal, this world for women has just been a better place. Because nevertheless, they refuse. It is because of these women, these giants, I'm reminded of a familiar woman in the biblical text, Queen Vashti. 
The first female character the book of Esther introduces is a certain woman by the name Vashti. Vashti was a queen and married to King Ahasuerus during the Persian Empire. Vashti, whose name literally means beautiful, life took a turn. You see, Vashti made a bold choice when in the midst of a drinking party, she refuses to appear before the king and his homeboys. Her narrative opens when King Ahasuerus is hosting a banquet for the officials and the ministers. Those who RSVP to the party included the army of Persia, media, and the nobles, the governors of the province. A regular kickback, right? The king then orders everyone to drink without restraint. In fact, if we go back a couple of verses, the biblical text says in verse 8, the rule about drinks was no limits. Meanwhile, Vashti is hosting her own banquet when the king orders the seven to bring Vashti to him wearing the royal crown on her head. He wanted all the men to gaze on her beauty, for she was a very beautiful woman. However, when they conveyed the king's order to Vashti, she refuses to come. Many have debated exactly what was being asked of her, and according to the women's Bible commentary, some suggest it is simply meant that Vashti was to come unveiled, which would have been a scandal for the Persian court. Others suggest that she was to come wearing only her crown, which would have been a scandal on a completely different level. When Vashti refuses, the king becomes furious and he burns with anger. In my opinion, the king's reaction is quite predictable. He is enraged. He feels humiliated. And not only that, he is enraged and humiliated in front of his boys. We know that kind of embarrassment. You remember when our parents used to embarrass us in front of our friends? Now, the biblical text never states that Vashti says anything, but nevertheless, she refused. The text also does not explain why she refuses, but nevertheless, she refused. To refuse to come out and make a display of herself for a man's benefit. To refuse to degrade herself so that she could say, he could save face in front of his friends, or in the words of my granny, his little friends. To refuse to come because you were called. To refuse to do something just because somebody asked. In addition, and most emphatically, to refuse to do it when you've been drunk for 187 days. Vashti refusal spoke truth, and the people in power quaked in their sandals because nevertheless, she refused. Now, I've pointed out what the text does not say, so consider this. In my imagination, I think Vashti could have been thinking, do I lose my dignity and remain royal, or do I lose my royalty to maintain my dignity? I think that that day, she made a conscious choice by not showing up at the command of a man. Vashti, by refusing to show up, up to the boys club sacrificed her place in the kingdom. You see, instead of catering to vanity and instincts of drunken guests, she courageously sacrificed the kingdom. Rather than lower the magnificent white banner of her own modesty, Vashti was willing to accept disgrace and dismissal. Her decision, her refusal, simply makes a statement. Understand this, women biblically were chattel. We had no voice, no purpose, and no power. Vashti cuts new ground here because she refuses to call. She refuses to show up when they've called her. Now, in the latter verses, it states that when a need arose, who would be called in to help handling these situations? An emergency contact list, if you will. Seven men. Vashti's fate lied in the atmosphere that is charged with heavy testosterone, who, if I may say, have never walked a day in her shoes. Immediately by her recommendation, Vashti loses her position, her crown, and all the things afforded to her solely because of who she was married to. In verses 16 and 17, it states, when Memukin spoke up in front of the king and the officials, Queen Vashti, he said, has done something wrong, not just to the king himself, but she's also done wrong to all the officials and the people in the provinces of King Ahasuerus. 17 says, for this reason, News of what the queen did will reach out to all women, making them look down on their husbands. They will say King Ahasuerus ordered servants to bring Vashti before him, but she refused to come. What I love about Vashti's narrative is it's not your average heroic story. Vashti does not save the day because she refuses. Her story is not that cut and dry. She loses everything. She's exiled and inspires an entire law due to her actions. Vashti's narrative is one of power. It is about a woman who spoke her truth without saying a word. 
who does not let others define her reality. It is about a woman who will not allow herself to be diminished by others because nevertheless, she refused. Vashti's narrative is one that every woman, especially black women, have known all too well. Every black woman who's been objectified, misused, abused, assaulted, insulted, silenced, rejected, and excluded from all full personhood by laws of the land that don't fit our narrative. This narrative is not just about the male to female power dynamic. The story is just a little bit deeper than that as well. This story is about more than just those dynamics. For those of us who have had to endure our integrity being called into question, it is for those of us who have had to weigh the risk between jobs and self-respect, it has had and has had to stand up in the face of an unjust situation and who has had to fight so that someone else doesn't have to. Friends, Wiley College chose the theme, Trust Black Women, as a theme for Women's History Month. And it is our own time message that the world just simply needs to adhere to because we refuse. We refuse to be silent. We refuse to be abused. We refuse to be objectified. We refuse. Vashti refused. We refuse. Nevertheless, she refused. Good morning, everyone. Please close your eyes and bow your heads as you join me in prayer. Father God, thank you for your presence throughout today's chapel. Show us how to apply what we have learned this chapel to our daily lives. Bless the faculty, staff, and students, Lord. Help us to embrace and enjoy the life you have given us to live. We thank you for your never-ending love. In your son's name we pray, amen. This is your Dean of Chapel, the Reverend Dr. Dominique Aisha Robinson. I am elated that you've joined us for our Worship at Wiley experience. I pray that you've been blessed and encouraged. Here at Wiley College, we support the spiritual, ethical, moral, and leadership development of all of our students. You need to know that the doors of this church are always open. If you are in need of any spiritual support, or if you are a student and interested in participating in our virtual chapel, please email me at darobinson at wileyc.edu or give me a call at 903-353-6360. I look forward to connecting with you and making sure you are clear that God is still in control. With that, my brothers and my sisters, thank you for joining us for worship. And remember, go forth inspired glorious deeds to do. has changed, but God has remained the same. And while things look different, we still are excited about what God is doing in our lives. So not with all hearts and minds clear, but with all hearts and minds full of what God has done, let us look to God for the benediction. To the God who can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. To the only wise God, that God of dominion, majesty, and power, Thank you for being that God in our lives. Now be with us as we depart this place, but continue to serve in your presence. 
Amen and amen. Yes.